Israel sees Iran as a problem for stability in West Asia. The recent talks to restart the Iran nuclear deal have stalled. Iran is reportedly continuing its military nuclear program in a clandestine manner. And now Israel seems to have proposed a way to counter this. If Russia threatening to use nuclear weapons against Ukraine was not enough, on Wednesday, the Director General of the Israel Atomic Energy Commission said Israel was ready to share its nuclear technology with the fellow Abraham Accord members. He said this during the general conference of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Now, Israel has never officially acknowledged that it possesses nuclear weapons, though it is suspected to have developed them as early as 1966. It has always maintained strategic ambiguity. It has said it would not be the first country to introduce nuclear weapons into the region, but has otherwise refused to confirm or deny a nuclear weapons program or arsenal. International observers have estimated that it has at least 80 nuclear weapons. After former U.S. President Donald Trump unilaterally pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal in 2018, Iran responded by rebuilding stockpiles of enriched uranium and expanded its nuclear program. The IAEA says Iran is enriching uranium to a higher purity than necessary for purely civilian purposes. Iran, however, maintains there is no undeclared activity going on in the country. Iran's president, Ibrahim Raisi, recently said that he wants the IAEA to drop its probes of unexplained traces of uranium found at three undeclared sites in Iran. As Iran's nuclear deal remains stalled, Israel seems to be taking matters into its own hands. Israel started normalizing ties with the UAE and Bahrain after the Abraham Accords were mediated by Donald Trump in 2020 and ties between Israel and the traditionally hostile Arab countries have been thawing in recent years. Arab animosity towards Israel because of the Palestine question has started to give way to fears of Iran's activities. The Sunni Arab states have long been rivals of Shiite Iran and now Israel may add more nukes to this already fractious neighborhood. For more on this, we have with us Dr. Ahmad Zia Baram. Uh, Dr. Baram is a professor emeritus at the University of Haifa in Israel. Uh, thanks very much for being here. Now, Israel said that the Abraham Accords were a, a way to chart a way forward uh, for stability in West Asia. Uh, but now, with these reports coming in, how do you think uh, if Israel does go ahead uh, with this uh, uh, plan or what it is mulling at this point, what would this really mean for the region and how would this change the power dynamics there? Well, first of all, I think we both understand that uh, the Director General was not talking about a peaceful uh, nuclear uh, cooperation over peaceful nuclear research, like a small a small nuclear reactor for research purposes because that the, uh, the Gulf Arabs can get from anybody. Uh, he was referring very obliquely or obliquely uh, to, a, to an Israeli uh, sharing information with the Gulf Arabs uh, in terms of nuclear military program. That's quite clear or he wouldn't say anything anyway. Now, there is no way, no way that Israel will do that, will share knowledge with anybody, as long as Iran is not a nuclear, a military nuclear, nuclear power. Namely, today, there is absolutely no way that Israel will do it. We have to remember that uh, in the early 70s, uh, uh, President Nixon, agreed with Israel on some kind of a gentleman's, gentleman's arrangement. Namely, Israel will not actually have the, the, the weapons ready-made to, to, to launch within a minute or an hour. Uh, Israel will make a declaration, something like Shimon Peres suggested, that, as you said correctly, Israel will not be the first one to introduce nuclear weapons into the Middle East. And the Israel will not proliferate, and Israel will not proliferate. 
that agreement was kept intact as far as we know. Now, there is a change. If Iran is becoming a nuclear, military nuclear power, everything is, uh, is, uh, uh, is beginning from, from scratch. Namely, all the agreements that agree, uh, exist between, that's what I understand from what the Director General just said, hmm. that Israel is bound by the agreement with the Americans, but only as long as Iran is not a nuclear power. If Iran is, then first of all, it will mean that the American uh, president will not, or the next president, will not keep his word that, that there will never be an Iranian nuclear military program, right. but uh, Israel also is not uh, bound by its agreement. So then what he's implying is, then we shall be helping the, um, the Gulf Arabs to develop nuclear weapons. I think that maybe it's not a good idea to say it, uh, <laughs> because uh, we don't have a nuclear weapon program as far as we know, right? If Israel is lobbying against Iran uh, when it comes to Iran's nuclear uh, weapons program and Iran being a nuclear power, uh, do you think that is successful right now? Yes, so far partially so, okay. but don't for, but do not forget that that uh, they are still moving forward slowly but surely, and uh, nobody is trying to stop them. The only way to stop them, I think, this is the only way is to uh, threaten them with military action. But no one is ready to do it, maybe right. except for Israel. All right, we're leaving it there for the moment. Thank you very much for being here on the broadcast. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.